This is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com and today we're going to be creating this wonderful push button using flat vector animation style. It doesn't use any 3D and it all uses manipulation of shape layers and shape paths using the grid system to keep everything lined up and neat and tidy. We'll manipulate the graph editor to make the motion interesting and uh, should be fun. So let's get into it. So, inside of After Effects, the first thing you're going to do is create a new composition to the size and frame rate that you intend to export. The next thing to do before we create anything is to make use of the grid. The grid is going to help us line up geometry in this space so that we can keep everything nice and neat and tidy and snap to the grid lines. To snap to the grid lines, go View, Snap to Grid, or if you're on a Windows machine, Control Plus or Command Shift Plus and all this stuff, so all the shortcuts will be listed here in the menu for your reference. So we're gonna be using snap to grid to create our shapes. Now I would also like to pull up the title and action safe just so I can get a better sense of where the center of the frame is. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the transparency grid off because it is confusing. So the first thing we wanna do is basically draw the end state of our button. And that is done by creating a new shape layer or just pull up the pen tool, pick the fill you intend to use and uh, in our case, we'll go with perhaps a darker red. And we'll start by creating the largest part of the shape, which is the rectangle plus the shadow outline. So we're gonna go from about uh, over here, and then the shape will continue down here, over this way, up, and that completes the rectangle. So you just wanna make sure that these points are all snapped onto the grid by just moving them around. Sometimes at certain zoom lengths, that doesn't happen. So what we also want to do now is pull this out to where the corners are going to be. So that's going to be the corner of the shadow. So we just need to use the pen tool here to add a couple new points and then stretch them out to be around there. So this is going to be, we can call this the walls, which are the thing that shows the 3D-ness of the button. Now we are going to duplicate this and this will be the surface of the button and we're going to use a fill that is slightly less saturated and slightly brighter and then we're just going to alter the points here and move them in to where they need to be somewhere like this and in fact we can just use the pen tool to delete some of those vertices because they're not really integral to what we're doing so now we kind of have the button in its upmost shape the other thing we want to add to this is a shadow, and the shadow will be coming off of here at the end. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the walls and duplicate those, move them below, and we're going to call this the shadow. And that shadow is going to be, of course, black, and I'm going to change its opacity down to be 25. And we will need to look at the transparency grid to see what we're doing with this. So we go to the shadow. And we just double click on it and then we get control of its points and then we can move those out and about in any which way we choose coming off the edge and you don't want to necessarily line them up uh, completely so it's just an extension of the shape you want to make some logical conclusions about where the light is how the light is affecting this so what i'm just going to do is i'm going to pinch this in a little bit this way and a little bit up this way so it's coming in like that. You can make a longer or shallower shadow as you desire. Uh, it's all uh, totally wide open and uh, go nuts with all of that. So, I mean, the only real point is that it happens to look accurate to what shadows should look like. And that's going to come down a lot to the behavior of the shadow. Uh, so we'll get into that as we start animating. So we've got, this will be its upmost state. And uh, what we'll do now, is we'll just go ahead several frames. Uh, we are now at uh, 106 here, and we're going to set keyframes for all of the shapes. That's what we're going to do. So, shape path, shape path, shape path, setting keyframes for all of them. And we know we want the button to be depressed, so it'll go down. So, we're going to move ahead a few frames. And to reduce the clutter in our timeline here, we're just going to look at only the keyframe properties by hitting U, bringing that up. And uh, let's create a new uh, solid and give ourselves a, a little background to work with here. Let's go with a light blue and uh, put that in the background. And we are ready to start animating its motion. So we're gonna start by animating the walls here. 
And when animating shape paths, all you do is you set a new keyframe and you manipulate the path and it will set a keyframe for you. So we go in here and then we can select the points that we want to move. Just these top ones, please, because really that's all that's gonna be depressing. And we're gonna push it down, say this much, good. Now we need to go up to this layer here, alter its points, you know, alter its path so that it's coming down as well. So if you look at that animation, it is pushing in. And this isn't complete without the shadow likewise pushing in towards the shape because as the shape is getting smaller, the shadow should also be getting smaller. So in order to do that, because it doesn't quite line up with the grid, you're gonna to need to use your rulers to estimate where that'll be. So right there is likely where that point will end up. And then I would say around here is where this point will end up. So now that we've put these, these guides out, then we can go here to the shadow path. Make sure you select that point and stick it on the intersection of these grid lines that we've created. It's dragging it, putting it on the grid line. That's good. So then we can see how that looks. Is it's squishing down and it seems appropriate. One other state that we want to create for this is going to be the state where the button is totally flat. And at this state, the shadow is of course totally compressed into the corners of the walls. So we can just position it there. And likewise, the walls are uh, in fact quite compact like so to create a rectangle. And of course the rectangle on top, let me just remove those grid lines. I'm just going to clear the guides so they're not in our way anymore. And then I'll alter the shape of uh, this top path here to be there. So the keyframes we have to play with are up and down like so. And so the motion we would like is for the button to pop up and then for the button to be pressed and then for the button to return almost to its fully up position, which I'd say is probably somewhere around here is good. So we can just set keyframes there and then drag them out to wherever we need them, like so. So now, if we look at our motion, comes up, down, and returns to there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these, all these keyframes, we're going to easy ease them by hitting F9 or easy easing or animation keyframes is an easy ease, and we will give some more interesting motion to them. So to this last keyframe, I'm gonna push its influence handle in, and then to these intermittent keyframes, we're just gonna push their handles forward. So if we look in, we have this peak, peak, valley, peak again. And how does that play out? Pretty interestingly. So it just puts a bit, a bit more interest into the motion. And one thing we'll probably wanna do is have its upstate uh, stay for a while. So we can just go ahead, copy and paste these keyframes ahead to uh, get it to stick around for a bit. And we'll probably want to extend the initial uh, coming up like so. So if you have a look at the button push, comes up, push, and it clicks in. So perfect, so far so good. Uh, the next thing to take care of is to maybe put some labels on this. So we went ahead and made new text and we put in push me on that. Good, that's a good enough thing to put on anything. And then you can use the grid to line it up if you so desire, but really you can take care of it visually. So I don't think that the grid is very useful to us at this point. So you line that up. And one of the things you wanna make sure is that you're using its position to keep it lined up with the shape and to keep its motion on track. The best thing to do is to hold down shift and use the arrow keys to nudge it, you know, up, down, left, right, to keep it at constant 45 degree angle. And that'll just make it a little bit easier to keep it where you want it. Because really, if this button here is not well aligned with what's going on, it will look very peculiar. So then you can go into its keyframes. We're gonna take them all, we're gonna easy ease them, and we're just gonna make sure that they all have the exact same kind of keyframe structure as the paths. So they're all gonna be ramping this way 
and then ramping the other way. So let's have a look at that. We go like this, we go like this, and then like this. So that all looks to be correct, just like that. And now you've created a push button. And this is the sort of thing you can use for rectangles of all kinds, shapes and sizes. It can be used for all sorts of graphical elements, not necessarily buttons, but it does look like a button. So hopefully this has taught you a little bit about what you can do by using the grid to easily animate shape layers. Anyway, this has been Evan Abrams for premiumbeat.com. If you'd like to learn more about After Effects and other applications, check out the blog on Premium Beat. There's all sorts of good stuff going on there with tips and tricks and tutorials in this and other applications. And come to premiumbeat.com for all of your music and sound effects needs. It's pretty awesome. There's probably some button clicks in there. Actually, th there definitely are some button clicks in there. You'll probably need them if you're going to be using this. Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. Follow me on Twitter at ECAbrams and stop by the blog at premiumbeat.com and I will see you around the internet.